Good morning, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. We are still here another day and we are commanded to keep the faith of his patience. Do we not need patience? You and I, loves, we are seeing the world disintegrate around us. But the thing is, it's disintegrating into place. This is what we are seeing is like when you get a, a jar of, um, of water and soil. And if you've got that jar, you just got a scoop of soil out of the ground and put it in the jar and you shook it all up. We are now watching that sediment layer in the stillness. We're in a stillness but we are watching that sediment layer fall into place. That which is light will float up, but that that's heavy with sin and corruption is going to sink down and it will stabilise on the floor. We will float up and it is doing what it needs to do, is to sink down, it is sifted from us. We are set free when we see what's going on, even though it breaks our hearts to see it. God has allowed us to see the separation. We are watching it separate from us, and yes, it seems to be stabilising on this earth. And we are being torn away from it, but that's how it must be. For us to go up, they have to be separated from us. We have to be able to see what's going on around us and pull ourselves away. It's a very hard thing for many people. For some it will seem lonely, but remember, loneliness is only when you don't realise that Jesus is with you. When you don't understand that when he said, I will never leave you, he spoke the truth. He will never leave you. No matter what you are going through at this moment, and my darlings, I know many of you are going through enormous tribulation. Persecuted by what used to be friends and family. But always know through it all, Jesus is with you. Be like the lady with the issue of blood. She knew if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she'd be all right. Reach out and touch the hem. He is there. He is there for you every moment. It is time to reach out for him. He is coming for us soon. I cannot tell you. It's today, it's tomorrow, it's next week, even next year. I hope and pray as those of the days of Paul, even Paul looked for it every day. We are to seek him every day. We are to anticipate him every day. Because imagine you are going through an enormous trial and Lions are about to come in on you, or if you're more realist, although that could be in countries. Whoops. Right, well, this will be very short. Dad's up, and so we've got to get on with our day. But imagine yourself in a place, Africa, yes, lions. You could be surrounded. I don't know. Ukraine, surrounded by tanks, by even your own people are killing you. All around the world, people are being attacked by their own people. So now, imagine you're one of those, those of you that aren't. Imagine you're one of those poor souls thinking there is no way out. And the moment they, they look around and there's Jesus holding out his hand. Or imagine that it's about to happen 
the war is about to really intensify on you and suddenly all goes quiet, everyone looks up, the earth shakes and at the moment that you're about to be shot, you go pew and the faces on those. It is wonderful to think what they will think when we go. The disbelief that they will have when we go, when they thought they had you. But regardless of whether we go poof then or if it is in that instant Jesus said left the moment you're from the body you are with him so it doesn't matter this this is a suit this suit feels pain this suit feels fear this suit feels doubt and just as the shaking is releasing us from those people around us that are wicked and have rejected the Lord, so this body will be shaken from us, only changed, and we will be free of all of those constraints that this body gave us. We will fly. We will be free. Jesus came to set the captives free. We are the captives of this world. So we will be separated. And when we are separated, we will for a very brief moment feel anxiety and feel as if we are left alone. But we will never be left alone. When Jesus makes a promise, Jesus is the truth. So the truth cannot ever make a promise that he will not keep. We have faith and trust in him. So as soon as something happens, it's time for you to go back inside yourself and remember the promises. For some of you, it's hard when you're in a very difficult situation to keep those promises at hand. But if you have a house, you can put the promise on a wall you can put it on a piece of paper and paste it to your wall. A reminder so that, for instance, not that I forget him, but I have a, a little, um, I've printed out a little piece of paper and on it it has God's name, yod Hey vav Hey. And every time I go through my bedroom door, I have his name on my door. So when I leave my, my closet, when I'm in my closet, I see his name. But when I leave, I know I remember he's with me. It can be that simple to know he's there. And then it could be you need to know that he's walking with you. Find a beautiful um, psalm or anything or even just where he says, I will never leave you. Put that, if that's what you need, or I am your strength, put that, whatever it is that you need, put it somewhere that you can see it regularly to encourage you. If you find that you, even God forbid you are homeless, and some of you have been, some of you will be again, if you find yourself in a situation where you've had to flee, you can write on yourself, and I don't mean tattoos, I'm not telling people to get tattoos, 
but you can even make a little plastic band and write on the band and put it on yourself a reminder of who you belong to a slave bracelet whatever you would like to call it you are a child of God anything that you can do to give you strength in that time it may be a memory a memory band so that all it may not say anything but you know when you when you are in a hard time touch it and remember what it was there for to remind you you are not alone the time is coming when many will feel that they are alone you are not alone and you will always have the prayers of the believers your brothers and sisters will always pray for you so keep your strength up we will not stop praying for you while there is life in us we will pray for all of you that are in distress you don't need to know who's praying we are just praying because you know even if we don't know you and you'll say well how can how can you possibly pray for me you don't know me you don't know what i'm going through god knows you he knows what you're going through and he puts it on our hearts to pray for you not for a specific name we don't have to know your name because we know your soul is in distress and the father loves you so he will put it on the heart of his children when you are in distress he will put it on the heart of your brothers and sisters around the world to add their voice to your prayers and to pray for you don't think no one is praying for you the father puts it on our hearts one of his children is in distress and needs prayer and he will see that we pray we don't always know who we're praying for. In fact, mostly we don't know who we're praying for unless a specific person has asked. But that doesn't mean we don't pray for you and know that you need help, that you need the Lord. You are in prayer worldwide. And you will pray for your brothers and sisters. Because God will one day, if you haven't felt it yet, he will put it on your heart. And you will, that's what that was. That's what that was. And you will pray. And you will remember that you are never alone. I'm going to leave it at that, my darlings. God wants you to know you are not alone. No matter the storm you're going through, no matter the persecution or the confusion, remember the Lord is not the author of confusion. Confusion is that horrible creature's domain. When there's confusion around you, know that you need to get into prayer and send up your prayers to the Lord and you can ask for us to pray for you. He will, he will put it on our hearts. And yes, we won't know you, we won't know your circumstances, but we will pray for your soul. God bless you all, my brothers and sisters. It's a, a strange one, but it was put on my heart to do this. I pray for you. I love you. 
but the Father loves you more. He answers prayers. Just as the woman in the desert, Ishmael's mother, he answered her prayer. She thought she was alone. She, you are never alone. Call on the Lord. Call on the name of Jesus, however you call his name, as long as it is the true Jesus. You cannot call on the Islamic Jesus. That is not our Lord. You cannot call on any of the other faiths that say Jesus is a prophet. You cannot call on those Jesuses. That is not Jesus. You must call on Jesus. Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus the Christ. So Yeshua, Yehoshua, is another form. That's the long form. Yeshua is the way it was written in the Hebrew Matthew. Yesus, Yesh, no, Yeshus. Oh, I can't say. Don't, don't um, copy me on pronunciations. I do not speak Greek. I do not speak any language except English and not well. <laughs> so, it's not the Monica name. It's not how, don't get caught up in, oh, you can't call him Jesus. You must say Yeshua or Yehoshua. You must say this or that. He knows who he is. Call on him in whatever language, whatever dialect, whatever pronunciation you have in your heart. Call on him because Jesus, Yeshua, is the one and only begotten Son of the living God. He is the Word, the truth, the life. He is from beginning to end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is one with the Lord. He did come down to earth in a human form. He took on humanity. He came here in the likeness of sinful flesh, although there was no sin in him. He carried our sins on his flesh to the cross. He was tortured. He was brutalized. And he was nailed to a cross. This is the true Jesus. He took our, our sins and the punishment for us because the, the wages of sin are death and he took the death. But because he was also God, he resurrected and conquered death, having taken every sin you've ever done to the grave for you. He came back to say, I did it for you. Now you can come with me. If you die with Christ, if you let him bear your sins and your punishment, you live with Christ. It's that easy. Die with him. Trust him. Give it all to him. And then just as he rose, you rise. Because you are no longer under the debt of sin. You are free. He frees you. And no matter what has happened to you on this earth, nothing can compare with the freedom we get when we leave this earth. And we will see the new earth and the new heaven. 
because he is ours. We let him pay the price for us. He paid the bride price. We are his bride. If he paid the price for you, let no one tell you you are not his bride. Because he paid the bride price. He set you free and paid the price for you. He loves you. So reach out your hand. Whenever you have trouble, reach out your hand for him. He will not fail you. The world is about to come into some terrible things. How long we'll be in that terror, I don't know. Each one of us will be in a different circumstance and it will be very difficult soon to communicate with one another. But until that happens, keep connected with one another the best you can that you may stand later knowing that until he comes, you have the prayers of the saints with you, that through everything that happens in the future, you know beyond doubt someone somewhere is praying for you in your darkest time. You are never, ever alone. So God bless you all, my loves. I'm heading off now and I know that I no longer give you nice airy fairy um, messages because this time is too serious. I love you, but God loves you. He has proven his love for you. I can just say the words, but you can feel God if you open your heart to him. If you know you have a God in heaven that loves you, then you know the soft embrace that you long for is waiting for you if you just open your heart to him. Oh, my loves, I, I get so silly, don't I? But his love for you is beyond anything a human could even describe. There is no words. But you know he died for you. He came in the flesh and he died for you. How much love is that? Knowing full well what he was doing, knowing what he was about to go through, he still did it. God bless you all, my darlings. Until I see you here or there, I still hope for there to be the first of the two, but otherwise... We'll be back together again one day soon. God bless you and love you. And may you have peace beyond all understanding when he turns his face to you. And may you feel the face of the Lord turn to you. To be in the eyes of the Lord you love every moment of every day is a wonderful feeling. A little embarrassing at times. <laughs> but wonderful feeling. God be with you all, my loves. Until we see each other soon. Amen.